Hello y'all, this is Brushfire Wind Dragon, and welcome back to Blackwell Legacy. Um, if, if you watched the last one, you'll notice that I didn't have the, uh, the letters and the uh, pictures, and I'll go ahead and put that in now. Oh. Looks like it's from Bellevue. Oh, it must be the folder. Dear Lauren, so you have been at NYU for two weeks now. September 3rd, 1960. This is for the aunt. And I'm not called. I'm sure things are busy in the Big Apple, but don't forget the family you left behind, I guess? Is this right where the recording bar is? Things back home are well. Jack starts high school on Monday, so he's a bit nervous. You know how he gets. Be sure to write him a letter. He misses his big sister. I admit, I am still a bit nervous about your living in New York all by yourself. You are carrying ID with you when you go out, like you asked. Like I asked. You know me, just being a mom. Someone has to. Keep your head on straight, kid, as your dad would say. And remember that you have a family back home that misses you. <laughs> Love you, Mom and Dad and Jack. From October 17, 1960. Hello, sis. I am writing this on my new St. Clair Model XB. I, uh, that must be some kind of typewriter. Mom says that improving my handwriting is a lost cause. So she got me this. Keen, huh? I've asked uh, something something. A recorder bar. Eddie typed up a few stories on it. Something. This letter can't something type for long because Dad says the noise, is, noise drives him up the friggin' wall. What does he know? So how is life in the big bad city? Troy is dead boring as usual. Why'd you have to go to college, huh? There's nobody to talk to in this dump anymore. See you at Thanksgiving, Jacko. December 5th. Dear Lauren, Oh, well, Thanksgiving has come and gone and so have you. In just two short months, I can already see you evolving into a capable young woman. You have outgrown this small town, Lauren. Something something is obvious. Jack will be following in your footsteps soon, I am sure. Visiting you in New York is all he talks about. Speaking of Jack, I know you're worried about him. We all are. Don't feel that is your responsibility. You are his sister and you love him, but he's got to learn to live without you eventually. You are growing up. Let him grow up too. Till Christmas, love. Mom and Dad and Jack. Can you keep a secret? I don't want to say this over the phone in case Mom or Dad or something Dad over here. So this is September 16, 1961. Mom's been acting odd lately. It started a few days after you went to NY. She was dragging me shopping when she saw you screamed and fainted. She was pointing at the corner of the room, but there was nothing there. We brought her to the hospital. She says she's fine now, but she's been very on edge and paranoid. It's hard to explain. Dad's no help. Can you call and try to cheer her up? She won't listen to me. Just don't tell her about this letter. I just hope she's okay, Jacko. November 13, 1961. You seemed concerned after our last phone call. I just want to write and reassure you that... I'm guessing it says everything is fine. F-I-N-E. Let us know when you're coming home again for Thanksgiving. With love, Mom and Dad and Jack. December 8th. Mom's getting worse. You said it best during Thanksgiving. It's like somebody is watching over her shoulder. Paranoia. She sits by herself for hours, something, tr trying to read when it's obvious she isn't. Lately, she's been covering her eyes as if to keep out. Lately, she's been covering her ears as if to keep out a sound and closing her eyes tight. Dad's losing patience with her. He's convinced she's lost her mind, and I'm starting to agree. She refuses to get any kind of help. Why can't she see that there is a problem? This isn't normal. Not normal at all. Why can't she see that? I hate to admit it, but I'm kind of scared. Scared for her. I don't know what to do. Jack. <sighs> Lauren, it has a name. Mom locked herself in the bathroom this morning. She sounded like she was talking to herself in there. Well, not to herself. It was like there was 
somebody else there, but there wasn't something to, uh, this is a cursed uh, recording bar. I couldn't understand it, but she did say the name Joey. I asked her later who Joey was, and she got really scared. Then she got angry and said, if you know what's good for you, never mention that name again. This could be the key. If we find out who Joey is, maybe we can save her. March 16, 1962. While it's done, the final papers have been signed. It hurt. A lot. But it had to be done. Mom has now been committed to a mental ward. I have to say, I am... I can't read it because it's under the corner bar. I know how you feel about it, but you weren't there. You didn't come home to see her screaming and tearing her hair out. Running around the house, knocking down everything in her way. Cuts were all over her face, and the house was practically destroyed. I was so shocked, I just closed the door and waited outside for Dad to come home. It was awful. She clawed at him, clawed at his face, and drew blood. It will haunt my dreams for the rest of my life. Thanks for coming out, Lauren. I don't think Dad and I could have handled it on our own. She kind of drained us, you know? Can I come to New York and visit? I might stay away for a while, Jack. May 17, 1965. Congratulations, Simna Cum Laude. I always knew you were a smarty pants type, sis. Now you've got the documentation to prove it. Thanks again for letting me stay in your place. Uh, something, something, and it was just like old times, except you weren't smoking them. New York is an amazing city, and Columbia has a great campus. I can't wait to move down there in September. But until then, I've got to deal with our grumpy old man. He's insufferable as always. Ever since mom, he's been hard to talk to. And very hard on me. I should tell him you're smoking now. Maybe then he'll concentrate on you for once. See you again soon, Jack. October 16, 1967. It's happened, Lauren. Just like you eventually said it would. I'm in love. Her name is Maria. She's from Italy and we met. Is this it? It's just statistics class. <laughs> she asked if she could copy my notes. Uh, something. Her hand was tired. We ended up talking over lunch and we've been inseparable ever since. She's incredible. She's got the most amazing red hair and I want you to meet her. I'll come by soon. Jack. Rosa's mother. December 19, 1970. Lauren, are you alright? Ever since mom's funeral, you've been hard to reach. I know it's been hard on us, but it's been six months. I tried calling, but you never came by. You never uh, came by the other day, and you didn't open the door. I knew you were there, at Lauren. Uh, I could hear you. I risked using the spare key you gave me, but you changed the lock. Come for dinner on Christmas Eve. Maria is a great cook. You won't ask any questions. Just come. Mom might be gone, but we're still here. I miss my big sister, Jack. Lauren, who is Joey? I went over last week to give you a Christmas gift. You didn't answer the door, but I heard you talking to somebody named Joey. Is that a boyfriend? Are you seeing a man named Joey? Is that why you've dropped off the map, or is it something else? I don't think I need to tell you what. For God's sake, talk to me. Jack. February 13th, 1971. Lauren, I know you're annoyed, but I am not sorry. I didn't want to do it, but you left me no choice. Hiring a private detective fully was the only choice left. He told me some odd things. You won't talk to me, but you'll talk to total strangers. You'll go to every far corner of the city the strangest hours, and you talk to yourself when you think you're alone. Don't deny it. You heard it, and so did I. Not that any of it made any sense. That alone is disturbing enough, but then he saw you collapse. You were all alone in some obscure park in the Bronx, when you just fainted. He was about to call an ambulance, but then he saw you get up again and walk off like nothing happened. You were always there for me growing up. Don't shut me out, sis. Let me be there for you now. Jack. Jacko, please stay away. Don't worry about me. There are things that need to be done, and I'm the only one who can do them. Don't ask me to explain. All I can say is something, something. I understand our mother more than ever. She was never crazy, Jacko. Trust me on this and take some comfort in it. You've grown up and you've grown tough and you don't need anyone to fight your battles anymore. You don't need me, but I'll always be your big sister, Lauren. 
April 15, 1973. I am returning your letter because I refuse to accept it. No, you don't need to fight my battles. I'm not 14 year old years old anymore, but we are still family. The more that's important, especially now that something, something. I wish I could see what it said under the recording bar. Look, you actually have something going on, and that's fine. You don't have to be involved if you don't want me to be, but I still want you involved in my life. Marie and I are getting married in November. You are coming. No stupid excuses. Jack. November 24th, 1973. Greetings from Greece. If there are any words to describe the beauty of this place, it still wouldn't do it justice. The perfect spot for our honeymoon. Things have been busy, as you can imagine, but I wanted to quickly write to say that I'm glad you made the wedding, of course. I'm still worried about you, but somebody has to be. You take care and stay in touch. Maria says hi. Jack. There are some pictures stuck to the back of this letter. March 31st, 1976. Dear Aunt Lauren. Yes, Aunt Lauren. You're an aunt. I'm a dad. Maria gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. We named her Rosangela after Maria's grandmother. She's so quiet. She hardly cries at all. I'm all set to spoil her rotten, but Maria says to take it easy. She looks just like your mother, and there's a bit of you in her eyes, too. And Mom and Dad, and everything our family was or will be, this child is it. Life is changing so fast, I just want to hold on to this tiny creature and never let go. The future is an exciting place, and I have everything I could ever want. I don't want anything to change, ever. Jack. The Law Offices of Dirk and Goldberg. April 21st, 1981. Dear Miss Blackfell, it is need within your legal something something to take custody of of your five-year-old niece. With the death of her parents, you are the only living relative. Please contact our office and we will start the necessary paperwork. I don't want to ruin the picture. Okay. Okay, so, um, I went to go play today, and lo and behold, there was an update, and then evidently that kind of like deleted my save file somehow, so I had to start all over again. But I got to where I was before, and I'm going to try to play for only about 15-20 minutes because I have to put the uh, um, the letters and the pictures in. I'm not ready for bed. Okay. <laughs> Cook, why bother when every Chinese restaurant in the area delivers? Well, I guess if you only Cook, want... Cook, <laughs> why bother when Chinese. every Chinese restaurant in the area delivers? I guess if you only want Chinese food. It's a photograph of Auntie Lauren and me. Aww. Baby Rosa. When I was a little girl, I'd try to talk to my younger self in this picture. I was trying to give myself advice about the future. It didn't work then, and I doubt it would work now. Oh, gosh. No. I used to talk to this picture when I was a little girl, but not anymore. Okay. <laughs> Okay, time to go, I guess. Find out what happened to poor Joanne. Ugh. I feel like hell and I have to interview college kids. Hopefully this won't take too long. There's nobody home. Oh, it's all electronic. Hmm? Hi, I'm Rose Angela Blackwell. Can I help you? Perhaps. Could I ask you a few questions? Oh, this is about Joanne, isn't it? You know her? Well, I am the RA for this floor. I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't know everybody. 
The campus police found her around 5 a.m. this morning. Can you tell me about her? Hmm. Well, all right. But could you leave my name out of it? That shouldn't be a problem. Good. Joanne's parents have already asked the dean to fire me. I don't need anyone else knowing who I am. What do you want to know? What can you tell me about Joanne? What was she like? I never hung out with her socially, but she seemed nice enough. Nobody ever complained about her. She always had friends around her. She never had any trouble, as far as I know. Her suicide came as a total surprise. Can you tell me anything about Joanne? She jumped off the roof. She died instantly. It was in the middle of the night. There was, there was no way anybody could have stopped her. Make sure you print that. Would you have a picture of Joanne? A picture? No. Why would I? Just asking. So how did you get to be an RA of this floor? What do you mean? Well, it's a girl's floor and you, well... Aren't? Yes. Well, it's like this. Someone at the registrar thought Adrian was a girl's name. So here I am. None of the girls have complained? Not yet. They seem to prefer it. This sort of thing happens quite frequently. You'd be surprised. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for helping out. Just remember, leave my name out of it. I'm not stealing stuff from college kids. I wasn't expecting you to, Rosa. There's nobody home. There's nobody home. There's gum stuck to the faucet. I'm not touching that. Okay, then. Yeah. Hi, I'm Rosangela Blackwell. Am I supposed to know you? No, I'm with the Village Eye. The Village what? The Village Eye. The newspaper. I've never heard of it. It's just a small paper. Yeah, I guess that. What do you want? I'd like to talk to you about your roommate, if that's all right. Jesus Christ. I'm busy with midterms. I told the campus police everything. Do you have to bother me? Look, so she killed herself. Big whoop. Why is that my problem? So you and Joanne weren't close. Brilliant deduction, Sherlock. Can you go away? It must have been hard, living with someone you don't like. What? You're psychoanalyzing me now? What the hell do you know about it? You're really starting to piss me off. <sighs> Will you please calm down? Calm down? Who the hell do you think you are? Well, that wasn't what I was thought she would say. Look, just tell me a little bit about Joanne and I'll leave. I'm recording. Please. Fine. You want to know about Joanne? She's dead. She couldn't take the pressure, so she jumped off the roof. Did Joanne act unusual before she died? Nope. Same old Joanne. Studied at her desk all day and slept all night, as usual. Quiet as a little mouse. Is there anything else you can tell me about Joanne? No. Do you have any thoughts on why Joanne would kill herself? Nope. Just another kid who couldn't hack. Do you have a photograph of Joanne that we could use for the newspaper? You want a what? Just a photograph. You'll get it right back. Yeah, right. You think I'm giving you anything? Think again. Can you tell me anything about Adrian? The RA? He's okay. He helps us out when we need it, keeps out of our way when we don't. It's the way it should be. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Why do you want to know? Just background info for the paper. I don't think so. Suit yourself. Joanne never had trouble sleeping. How would I know? You lived with her. Like I pay attention. So Joanne was a good student. Yeah, sure. Whatever. I'll okay, think okay, yeah, yeah. Thanks for helping out. Yeah, sure. Whatever.
There's nobody home. Okay. Let's look at the details. But if she was a good student and slept alright, why wouldn't she be able to hack it? If I were planning to kill myself, would I sleep soundly at night? I don't know if I could. Yeah. Joanne seemed to be a hard-working student. Maybe the pressure got to her. Adrian lives a few doors down from Joanne in the NYU dorm. He's the resident assistant for the floor. Joanne and Kelly were roommates at NYU. That's all I really know about them. Nobody would give us a photograph. Maybe Adrian has a photo of Joanne I could use. If anyone has a photograph of Joanne, it would be Kelly. If only I could convince her to give it to me. Could Adrian have had something to do with Joanne killing herself? Could Kelly have had something to do with Joanne killing herself? Adrian lives a few doors down from Joanne in the NYU dorm. He's the resident assistant for the floor. It would appear that Joanne was a pretty good student, or at least a hard-working one. My boss asked me to find a photograph of Joanne to put it in the paper. All I know about Joanne is that she was an NYU student who killed herself. Hmm? Hi, it's me again. You have more questions, I imagine? Yeah, is that okay? I suppose so. What do you want to know? Do you know if Joanne had any trouble sleeping? I'm afraid I wouldn't. Her roommate, Kelly, never complained, but that's not surprising. Why is that? Well, Kelly rarely spent the night in her room. She only comes here to study, as far as I've seen. Was Joanne a good student? I don't think she had any problems, but of course, the pressure can get to anybody. Do you know where Kelly was sleeping? No. It's not my place to ask. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for helping out. Just remember, leave my name out of it. So, how can she know that? Wait a minute. Something isn't right. If Kelly's been spending her night somewhere else, how can she know if her roommate was sleeping well or not? Hmm. I think Kelly was lying to me. I wonder if Kelly lied about Joanne. Yeah? Your RA told me that you haven't been sleeping in your dorm. Yes, yeah, so? You told me that Joanne slept in her room every night. So? How would you know Joanne slept here if you've been sleeping somewhere else? Huh? Oh. Well, I just assumed. Did you lie to me? I didn't lie. I just... No, screw it. You want to talk? Fine. What do you want to know? So what was Joanne really like? To be honest, there's nothing to say. She was studying political science, which is kind of cool, I guess. She was so vanilla. Vanilla? You know, sweet, but not much there. Just a typical college kid. Act just like everybody else. She seemed proud of it. Did Joanne act unusual before she died? Well, no. Although, the last few weeks she's been talking in her sleep. What did she say? No idea. Couldn't understand her. She swore up and down that she wasn't doing it. She looked a bit scared, though. Scared? How so? Just scared. I didn't need the drama, so I've been sleeping at my boyfriend's place. So you weren't here when she... Killed herself? No, I wasn't here. N not that it would have made much of a difference. Are we done? I could really use a photo of Joanne, if you have one. Hmm. All right. Just a sec. This was hers. It was on her desk. She won't be needing it anymore. Joanne's the girl on the left. Thanks. Can you tell me anything about Adrian? The RA? He's okay. He helps us out the way she- Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Why? Just back up. Oh. Think suit yourself. Okay. Thanks for helping out. Yeah, sure. Whatever.
All I know about Joanne is that Adrian lives a few Joanne and Kelly were roommates at NYU. That's all I really know about them. Could Kelly have had something to do with Joanne killing herself? Could Adrian have had something to do with Joanne killing herself? There's no body. Hi, it's me again. You have more questions, I imagine? Yeah, is that okay? I suppose so. What do you want to know? What can you tell me about Joanne's roommate? Kelly? Have you met her? Yes. Quite a sight, huh? But don't judge her by that. She's the sharpest kid you'll ever meet. She gets straight A's on everything. Really? Yep, she's pre-med. Could you tell me about Joanne again? Well, as I said, I didn't know her socially. But she seemed nice enough. Nobody ever complained about her. She always had friends around her. She never had any trouble, as far as I know. Her suicide came as a total surprise. So who are these friends? Can you tell me anything about Joanne? She jumped off the roof. She died instantly. It was in the middle of the night. There was, there was no way anybody could have stopped her. Make sure you print that. They really thought you were a girl. Yes. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for helping out. Just remember, leave my name out of it. I don't think I found everything. The way he talks, I think Aiden had something to do with Ugh. This is getting worse. At least I have enough for the story now. I better get home. This is getting bad. Oh my god. This really hurts. Sleep, that's all I need. I'll just type up the story and get to bed. Shouldn't take that long. Okay, let's get on the computer. Right, no more interruptions. Done. Article's finished, picture is scanned, and I am done for the day. No. What's... I need fresh air. The picture... The I've got to get out of here. Pulling. Again. I'm here to see Dr. Quentin. Sure thing, you're cleared. Go right in. Come in. Dr. Quentin? Oh, hello. Come in, come in. Do you know anything about headaches? It's hardly my specialty, but I know enough. Why? I've been getting them. Lots of them. In your case, I'd say they were triggered by stress. Are they usually this bad? It varies. Over-the-counter pain medication, rest, that's all I'd suggest. Thanks. I guess I'll head out. Very well. Goodbye, Miss Blackwell. I don't think these are normal headaches at all. It's a photograph of Auntie Lauren and me. No. I used to talk to this picture when I was a little girl, but not anymore. Griff is fine where he is. Well, um... 
I guess this is a good stopping point as any, and thank you for all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and see you all next time. This is Rushfire Wind Dragon signing off.